I think they should get rid of all pro phones and have all of the features on one phone that they release once a year. I think they should leave it as it is, pro and non-pro. Not everyone wants all those features. Where do you lie in the debate? Are you with this person or are you with this person? Each year we clamber onto features on phones like these and one some of the manufacturers that either widen or narrow the gap between non-pro and pro phones. But what makes a phone pro and should the day of the pro phone come to an end? You may have noticed that every year there are more and more phones that claim to be pro or ultra, such as the iPhone 15 Pro, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, the Google Pixel 8 Pro and many more. But what does pro actually mean? And are these phones really worth buying? Are they just overpriced and overhyped? As different users may have different expectations and preferences for the phones, there will probably never be a right answer to this. But for me, these are the criteria that I think are important to evaluate whether a phone should be deemed as pro or not pro. The performance and capabilities of the processor, the memory, storage and the battery, the quality and features of the display and the camera, the design and durability of the body, screen and the ports. The pro and ultra in phone names doesn't necessarily mean professional in the strict sense of the word. They are mostly marketing jargon used by Apple, Samsung, Google and others solely to indicate that their devices have some extra features or capabilities compared to their standard non-pro phones. For Apple, pro means that it's iPhone 15 Pro and Pro Max having promotion technology, the always on display, the action button, a better chip with better performance and an extra GPU core in the A17 Pro chip, a telephoto lens meaning better optical zoom options, advanced video and photography camera features, better battery life, faster transfer speeds, a stronger titanium build, higher storage options and better connectivity. For Samsung Ultra means the Galaxy S23 Ultra is optimized for immersive gaming with a bigger phone with a larger screen and wider adaptive refresh rate range, higher storage options, a greater megapixel camera with increased digital and optical zoom, a bigger battery and the S Pen. For Google, Pro means that the Pixel 8 Pro is a larger phone with a larger display that features updated screen protection, higher peak brightness, a wider smooth display refresh rate range, a bigger battery, a larger memory and storage options and better camera features with a better autofocus sensor on the wide camera, a higher megapixel ultra wide camera and the additional telephoto camera. So from just these simple comparisons between pro and non-pro phones, you can see the differences between how Samsung, Apple and Google define what makes their pro or ultra phone pro. But these terms are also meant to appeal to us, the buyers, who want the best of the best or associate pro and ultra with premium quality and status. Whether we are Apple or Android fans, we can all honestly admit that all pro and ultra phones these days are pretty impressive in terms of performance and quality. And if we do nitpick between features on one phone, that may not be on other or whether Apple has taken a feature that's been on Android phones for years and vice versa, they are only small little things. They can all generally handle demanding tasks such as gaming, video editing, multitasking without lagging or overheating. They all have high resolution displays that can produce vivid colors, sharp details and smooth animations. They all have versatile camera systems that can produce stunning photos and videos in various modes and conditions. They all have sleek and ergonomic designs that are comfortable to hold and use for the majority of users. They all have durable bodies that resist scratches, dents and drops but that doesn't mean that they can't break from the slightest innocuous fall. They mainly all have those convenient USB-C ports that can support fast charging, data transfer and accessories. They all have user-friendly and reliable operating systems that can offer smooth navigation, customization and updates. And they all have a wide range of apps that can enhance the functionality and productivity of the devices. So they're not all that dissimilar. But these phones are definitely pro in terms of their features and capabilities. But you might be thinking, don't the non-pro phones share many of these characteristics as well? Does that mean they're still worth buying? Well, that depends on your perspective. Many people have called for an end to the pro phone era and demanding some of those pro features be put on the non-pro phones. Now you've already briefly heard from these two sides of the argument, but let's hear them put down their cases for both sides of the pro and non-pro debate. The red side with arguments for ending the era of the pro phone and the green side with arguments against ending it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
Pro phone is just too expensive and not worth the extra cost for most users. The average price of a Pro phone is around $1,000 or more, which is significantly higher than the price of a non-Pro phone. Most users are not even going to need all of the features or capabilities of a Pro phone. Therefore, it may be better off just saving the money and buying a cheaper phone that can still meet their basic needs. The Pro Phone is worth the extra cost for some users who value performance and quality. Some users may have specific needs or preferences that require a high-end device with superior performance and quality. Some users may be professional photographers or videographers who need a powerful camera system with various options, or gamers who need a fast processor with high graphics capabilities. These people may be willing to pay more for a Pro Phone like this that can satisfy their demands. The Pro Phone is just too similar to the non-Pro in terms of performance and quality. The gap between the two has been narrowing over the years as technology advances and becomes more accessible. Many non-Pro phones can offer the same comparable, even superior performance and quality to some Pro phones in certain aspects. Therefore, is there much difference or advantage in buying a Pro Phone over a non-Pro Phone? The Pro Phone is still different from the standard or budget phone in terms of innovation and exclusivity. The Pro Phone often has features and technologies that are not common or available in the non-Pro Phone, as it represents the cutting edge of innovation in the industry. Some Pro Phones have unique or novel features such as a foldable screen, a larger zoom capability, or a special feature like LiDAR or temperature sensor, therefore it may just add some more value or appeal in buying a pro phone that can just offer something new or different. A pro phone like this is just too complicated and overwhelming for most users. The pro phone often has many features and settings that can be confusing or intimidating for most users, especially those who are just not tech savvy or experienced. For example, some pro phones have multiple cameras with different lenses and modes that just require manual adjustment or advanced software tools that require technical knowledge. Therefore, most users may just prefer a simpler and more easy to use phone that can still perform well. The Pro Phone is not too complicated or overwhelming like he says for most users who are just willing to learn and explore. The Pro Phone may have many features and settings that can be challenging or daunting for most users, but it can also be rewarding and fun for those who are just curious and adventurous. Some Pro Phones have features and tools that enable users to create or edit amazing content or customize or optimize their device. Therefore, most users may just enjoy a more versatile and powerful phone that can expand their possibilities abilities and potentials. Loads of budget Android phones out there have higher refresh rates, but these non-pro iPhones are just stuck at 60 hertz. A higher refresh rate would make the user experience more smooth and responsive, especially for scrolling, gaming, and watching videos, which would enhance the overall quality and performance of the iPhone and make it more competitive to those Android phones that offer higher refresh rates. A higher refresh rate would also enable promotion technology on the non-pro iPhones, which is a feature that dynamically adjusts the refresh rate based on the content being displayed. This could save battery life by lowering the refresh rate when it's not needed, such as for static images or text. A higher refresh rate would increase the cost and price of the non-pro iPhones, which are meant to be more affordable and accessible to a wider range of customers. Apple may want to keep the higher refresh rate as a premium feature that differentiates the pro models from the standard ones and gives consumers an incentive to upgrade. Maybe putting a better display with a higher refresh rate is more expensive. It is called ProMotion after all. ProMotion on a pro phone? Apple would have to call it something else if it was on the non-pro phones. Anyway, a higher refresh rate may not be necessary or noticeable for most users who just don't care about how much smoothness or responsiveness of their own display. I think having a pro and non-pro version of phones is a good thing. It allows you to choose a phone that suits your budget, needs, and preferences. If you want a big phone with a high-end camera and performance, you might opt for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, or the Google Pixel 8 Pro. If you want a smaller phone with a lower price and a simpler design, you might go for the iPhone 15, the Galaxy S23, or the Google Pixel 8. We moan about brands becoming too similar or the lack of a different feature set with year-on-year -year phone generations, but this way you can still enjoy the benefits of competition and innovation within the smartphone market. Yes, every year we're not going to be hearing about the greatest eye-opening features on this year's phone compared to last year's version, and yes, sometimes it might be a little bit boring. It could even be argued that tech advancement in mobile phones is slowing down, which might lead to a point where we don't get these year-on-year -year upgrade events until 
that point where we find the next big thing. But having options to buy pro and non-pro phones means that different manufacturers have to compete with each other to offer the best products and services to you, which leads to more innovation, quality, and a variety in the smartphone industry, and even amongst their own lineups. So what do you think? Do you agree or disagree with the pro non-pro debate? Do you own a pro phone like this, or are you planning to even buy one? Or do you think that the pro phone is overrated and necessary? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Press the like button if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already for videos just like this one. And I will see you in the next one.